What is up everyone? We are back finally with another fresh MCU ranking. This time there's a bit of a twist on it though. So instead of your classic just listing them out or maybe a tier list where you know this is an A tier movie, this is a D tier movie, what we're doing this time is a bracket challenge. So obviously you probably know how these work. It's pretty much just a tournament. So we have all these rounds here and with how the movies are set up and there's an odd number, there's 23 right now. It's a little uneven but that's fine. Um, basically we're just going to go through round by round and I'm going to do pretty quick breakdowns of each movie like what I like better about one than the other so like for example we have Captain America the first Avenger and Guardians 2 here so I'll just do a little short thing about both these movies and then move on to the next round because I don't want to over like repeat myself too many times because we are going to have to cover the same movies a couple times because some are going to move on to final rounds so I am going to try to make this quicker than it could be for you guys, so hopefully you enjoy. Also, please leave a like on this video if you want some more videos. I'm thinking about just posting some different like gaming rankings, music rankings, so if there's anything outside of the MCU you want me to do rankings for or brackets, anything, let me know because obviously there's not a lot of new MCU content right now. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into this ranking and we have our first matchup, which I already brought up, but Guardians 2 and Captain America the First Avenger. Now, I'm going to say this is the easiest round, honestly, that I'm looking at right away because I think Captain America the First Avenger is a really good starting story. I just like it. It builds Steve's character up to what you know him to be in the future. Like, he just stays true, but it shows his true morals and stuff in this first movie. Just really well done. And Guardians 2, I did not like. The humor didn't land for me, and when it's a movie mainly focused around its humor, that kind of is important and I really just didn't buy into the whole ego storyline like wasn't a big fan of that one I feel like they could have done a lot better lots of star power in that movie I just feel like it was wasted potential not a movie I really watch a lot either it just one of the lower points of the MCU for me now we have Captain Marvel and Thor so honestly I know Captain Marvel gets a bad rap and I'm not the biggest fan of her character but I do think Captain Marvel was a pretty decent starting movie I don't think they really like push their agenda or anything like everybody says they do I just think Captain Marvel is just kind of annoying how they made her. Like, they could change her a little bit, make her, I don't know, she's like a Tony Stark that's less funny but just as mean, so it doesn't really work as well as it does with Tony. Thor, on the other hand, this is definitely, you know, the first two Thor movies were not the greatest, but this is definitely better than the second Thor movie, and it does have some good humor in there, some fish out of water stuff when he's on Earth, and that's all good, but some of the supporting characters and stuff are very annoying this and it's just kind of a dull movie too so although i don't love it i'm gonna have to give this one to captain marvel now we have a powerhouse around here we have avengers endgame versus black panther now i don't want to waste everybody's time black panther is an amazing movie that has just an amazing story one of the best actual like stories in the mcu but endgame is just on its own level in the mcu such an experience that you know, really wish I was having right now because that was about a year ago. So, would it be going uh, to Endgame in a couple days if it was real life a year ago? Now we're stuck inside forever. But, anyways, Endgame is just an ultimate movie here. So many great moments, so many memorable moments. It has to move on. It cannot be eliminated in the first round. And now moving on, we have Thor Ragnarok versus Spider-Man: Homecoming. Now, Thor Ragnarok is definitely one of the funnier movies. Taika Waititi put his spin on it and it really worked it saved thor it revitalized his character and all the other characters in the thor movies but on the other hand spider-man homecoming is also a really good spider-man story now it's a little out of the box from the you know spider-man's we're used to like the Raimi's and the garfield ones like it's a little bit different but i think they did really good with the stuff and incorporating tony stark as the uncle ben it felt fresh because you're not seeing the same uncle ben dying story again and i think it was right in this one now after this movie, I feel like they went a little overboard with some of the technology and stuff they fell in with uh, the Spider-Man movies here. But I'm going to give this one to Spider-Man Homecoming. I know this might be unpopular because a lot of people love, love, love Thor Ragnarok, but I got to give it to Homecoming. Also, I'm not sure if I'm like contradicting myself with movies here that I'm putting above other ones for my rankings. I'm just going to let you guys know that was a long time ago. I've rewatched pretty much all these movies since then, so opinions are going to change over time. So if I have contradicted myself, that is why. On the left side, we're down to our final two rounds. So, Captain America, the Winter Soldier versus the Avengers. Now, I think the Winter Soldier is one of the better movies in the MCU. It is a serious take 
there's not a lot of like actual humor and obviously it's an mcu movie so there's gonna be some jokes and lighthearted moments but it's a more serious take it's almost like a political thriller that's still like an action movie because it's obviously a superhero movie and i really really love this i really test cap and who he can trust and he just wants to trust and believe in everyone and everyone's good but really test him and it is just a great movie but avengers first time we see all these heroes that we love together built towards it so perfectly so many great sacrifices the humor is on point i have to give it to avengers it is so sad to eliminate winter soldier in the first round but avengers is just that movie you can rewatch avengers 30 times a year and you will not be sick of this movie it is just amazing it really hurts my heart to give up winter soldier because winter soldier is probably objectively like a better movie but i have to give it to avengers just the emotional aspect and like i said seeing these heroes for the first time on screen is just something amazing and it still holds up today and now we have ant-man versus age of ultron now ant-man was a very funny movie but it did kind of follow the mcu formula which is kind of the same little setup story and then the villain is like the anti version of the hero they did it in iron man did it in ant-man and there's others i can't think of right now i'm not sure why i'm blinking on this but oh captain america kind of too with red skull so it's just the mcu format we're used to it by now it is a good movie you can just throw this on and watch it in the background if you're doing something else or working on something it is a good movie in the background so that's that for ant-man now in age of ultron this movie got a lot of hate and I think it's just because it's so hard to follow up something so good. It's kind of like The Dark Knight Rises following up The Dark Knight. It's still a great movie, but after following up something so amazing, people's expectations are just out of the roof and it does not meet it no matter what you do. Now, it was a little jumbled with the storylines and I feel like they had a little bit too much going on towards the middle of the movie that was kind of hard to follow on the first watch through. But I do really like Ultron. I know a lot of people, including me, were wishing he'd be more of like a darker, scarier villain. But it's the MCU, that's not what you're going to get, and I still think Age of Ultron was a really good movie, and I have to put it past Ant-Man. It's just so hard for Ant-Man, the single, so small-scale movie, to be this huge piece with all these heroes that we love coming back for the second time. And like I said, it had a lot of the same charm the first Avengers had, I just don't understand why people didn't like this movie as much. Now we have Hulk and Iron Man 3, both movies that don't get enough credit. Now, Hulk obviously it's kind of out of place and since they switched actors and it's like the only one they've really done that with for a major role like this it's kind of weird and out of place now going back to it but i still think it's a pretty good movie that has some good moments like i said it just doesn't feel like an mcu movie it doesn't have that quite charm and spin on it then moving on to iron man 3 this movie i do not understand the hate at all like i said i've been saying the whole video the mcu is a light-hearted film franchise that has some deeper moments but it's light-hearted there's lots of humor I don't get why everyone was so pissed about the Mandarin twist. I really love this movie. Honestly, it might be my favorite Iron Man movie. It's up there. Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 3 are very close, and they are up next in the next round, so I'm going to have some decisions to make. But I don't get the hate on this movie. I think it just has the same charm that we've had from the first Iron Man. Iron Man 2 is kind of out of place, but same Iron Man charm. I think Killian was a good villain. Peppers and uh, Tony's relationship develops well in this i just think it had a lot of good moments and the moments in like the town in tennessee with a kid like it has a lot of great moments i think people didn't give this enough credit again just because a sequel after a great thing people don't like to talk about so iron man 3 is going to move on from me now we have ant-man and the wasp and thor the dark world not wasting anyone's time ant-man and the wasp lovable funny movie Pretty much just that. It's kind of a MacGuffin film where they're chasing after the one object. Thor the Dark World, bland, forgettable, the worst villain I think we've ever had. Thor is boring in this. Loki isn't used great in this. He literally gets locked away for half the movie. Like This is just a bad movie. So we're skipping over that Ant-Man and the Wasp with the easy win. Now we have Guardians and Civil War. Now, the Guardians of the Galaxy I liked more than the Guardians 2 movie. But I'm still just not the biggest Guardians fan, to be honest with you guys. Civil War, I love Tony. Captain America, an amazing hero. These guys, it's pretty much an Avengers 2.5 movie. All our favorite characters are in this. Great action scenes. The fights are incredible in this. The chase scenes, it's got to go up. I know people love Guardians, but for me, Civil War, way better. Infinitely better for me. Alright, so I am re-ranking Iron Man 2 versus Doctor Strange because guess what? 
I thought this was Iron Man 1, so ignore everything I just said for Iron Man 3 talking about Iron Man up here. I know that's going to make no sense in the video because I have to cut around this, but I'm not re-ranking. Iron Man 2, like I said, I still love Tony and he has some great moments, but they just didn't really have too many villains, not too much of a focused plot really. It was kind of all over the place. Another one of those that's just like on the first watch, you're like, what is really happening? Like, why am I watching this movie? What's going on? Or on the other hand, Doctor Strange, one of the most visually pleasing movies. It has amazing effects. I still think it's a good like startup movie for a hero. I like I like the stuff when he was, you know, actually a doctor and stuff, even though it's very short in the beginning. I think it was a great movie. And like I said, the effects and everything, it's just such a well done movie where Iron Man 2 is just kind of a mess, so I have to move it on. Now we have Iron Man versus Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, Spider-Man Far From Home, obviously our newest MCU movie, and this is a very good Spider-Man film also. I know a lot of people don't like the Spider-Man take, and a lot of people love the Spider-Man take in the MCU. I think this was great. This is what we needed, him on his own. Obviously, there's a lot of the stark tech and stuff with the glasses, but I think how they did Mysterio was very well done. Once again, another thing that's just really cool to look at, the effects, but also it will fit well into the story very cool movie lots of you know the marvel charm and everything but it was very good now on the other hand we have iron man now this is very very hard to choose for me iron man obviously set up the entire mcu classic humor shows tony stark and it kind of introduces you to him as this like asshole that's he's funny but with a sarcastic humor but it's kind of like you love and hate him and it sets it up perfectly. It's such a powerful movie for the MCU. And I'm not trying to rank these based on how much effect they have on the MCU. But when this movie set up the entire tone, stories, everything for what's going to happen later in the MCU. And it's just perfectly well done. Because Tony Stark is the perfect character. In my eyes, I'm giving it to Iron Man. It hurts. Because I, because Spider-Man Far From Home is a great movie. But I just have to give it to Iron Man here. And Infinity War gets the bye week here, it gets a free week because it's an odd number of movies we have in the MCU. Alright, so now we are on to our second rounds across the board. And some of these I'm going to go really quick through so I can save time and talk about the ones I really want to talk about more. And the ones I'm going to save time on are Captain America versus Captain Marvel. Now, both the first movies in their uh, series here, like I said, Captain Marvel hasn't had a sequel yet, but you know, it's their startup movie, so we're comparing the first one versus the first. And Captain America just shows you this lovable guy that just wants to do what's right. His heart is in the 100% right place. And then Captain Marvel, on the other hand, is kind of just this cocky, unfunny character. Like I said, the, mon the movie had some good moments in it. And I like Nick Fury. He's always great. And her and Nick's um, dynamic was pretty good. But I have to give this one to Captain America, the first Avenger, which is a better movie all around. Now we have Endgame versus Homecoming. Once again, Homecoming. I love this movie. Same things I said in the first one. It is a great take on Spider-Man. I love how they didn't bring back Uncle Ben and took a different take with Tony Stark in this one. Endgame is just such a powerful movie in the MCU with so many memorable moments. So many of the moments we've been waiting for years to see. All our favorite heroes for the last time all together. It can't get eliminated right here. It just it, it cannot. Now we're the first two Avengers movies against each other. And as I was saying... I do like Age of Ultron, and I do think it gets a little bit too much hate, and it's still a great movie. If you go back and watch it, if you haven't watched it in a while, and you just have a negative idea of it in your mind, I would go back and watch it for sure, but it is not better than this first Avengers. Like I said, it's pretty much just the first Avengers a little bit worse, so I have to give it to the Avengers. Like I said, just everything from the humor to the action to the payoffs that happen in this movie, it is just a perfect, perfect Avengers movie. It has to move on here. Now on the right side, we have Doctor Strange and Iron Man 3. Might be a bit of a hot take here. Not sure what your general idea is. Actually, I'm going to put a card up here on the video if I remember to vote. Which one of these do you like better? But I'm going to have to give this to Iron Man 3. I really think it has all the charm of the original with some great action scenes. I like the connection, like I said, with him and Tennessee and the kid. Him and Pepper get along well. I liked the Maya twist. I like the Mandarin twist too. I think the humor worked. All this stuff worked for me. I guess it's just if the twist paid off and worked for you or not, as if you like this movie or not. But it worked for me, so I have to move it on here. And now we have Ant-Man and the Wasp versus Civil War. Now, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a great, carefree, fun movie. Like I said, they can just put on in the background. But Civil War is just a masterpiece here. The Tony and Cap debate, which 
goes back to like their true beliefs that they've been setting up since the very first movies of them finally coming out all these different things and zemo i think was a perfect villain for this movie you didn't need a real villain you just needed that like puppet master and they played that perfectly this movie is one of the best in the mcu and it has to move on and now we have iron man versus infinity war infinity war is getting its first battle here because like i said i had the bye week first time because odd number of movies and iron man i've said stuff about it infinity war another amazing avengers movie they kind of got back to form like i said i still like age of ultron but it's a little jumbled and stuff so somehow they made infinity war with more characters more villains and made it more like concise and put together the humor once again is at an all-time high while the emotions are also at an all-time high like i said it has some really high highs and no really low lows iron man is a good movie but just all together looking at it Infinity War is just another event movie that has to move on past Iron Man. So now that we have our bottom team set up here, waiting for the competitors, we gotta go up here to the top. So now we have the first Avenger versus Endgame, and this is really just a case of first Avenger being out of its class. It is a great little solo movie, sets up Captain America and his character well, but as I've said, Endgame is such an event with so many memorable moments that we've been waiting to see for years. There's just no way I can give this one to the first Avenger. It has to be Endgame. And on our right side, we have Iron Man 3 versus Civil War. So this is a very interesting matchup. Obviously, the general consensus is Civil War, but I have to agree with him. I've already explained what I like about both movies, but Civil War is really just the better movie. I will fight for Iron Man 3 till the day I die, but it is nothing compared to Civil War. Which, like I said, just has so many great action pieces. The perfect puppet master of Zemo as a villain. Some really, like, it's a deeper movie. I like the more serious takes in the MCU. And it is one that really sacrifices a lot of humor to have some really serious moments. And I love that they did that in this movie. And now we have our final four. So we're going to start on the left side with Avengers Endgame versus the original Avengers. Both amazing movies here on their own regard. Now, I just want to throw this out here. My opinions could change tomorrow like this is just kind of day by day things with these movies because these are all incredible i saw all these characters and it has some great scenes in it but in the same regard i have to be a little unbiased here and look at it objectively and notice that the avengers really has some corny moments in it and it is i still love this movie dearly it's here in the final four so don't take this as hate against the avengers i like that i've watched this so many times over again but endgame is just I think the better movie it has so many deep moments in it so many payoffs obviously it has some very very emotional moments in it while also keeping the humor there's so many characters they're balancing and doing it so well obviously more towards the final battle but they kind of focus back in on our original avengers and i love that absolutely i have to move it on it hurts my heart to eliminate avengers here but it has to move on now we have pretty much Avengers 2.5 in Civil War versus Avengers Infinity War. Now I'm hoping that I do not get crucified for saying this. I'm not even sure if it's legal to say this, but I think I prefer Civil War over Infinity War. Now they're both amazing movies and Thanos is probably the best villain we've gotten in the MCU. Without a doubt, probably actually. I'm not sure why I'm saying probably. But like I said, Civil War with a take between Tony and Cap and how... It's their morals and beliefs that are clashing with the puppet mastery of Zemo. A very, very well done movie. It introduces Black Panther. It has all these different connections. I'm having trouble putting into words, honestly. But this movie is just a movie I don't want to go back and rewatch. Every time I rewatch it, I'm just like, this is a masterpiece. I know people consider Infinity War as the best movie in the MCU a lot. I think I have to put Civil War over it. I know it hurts. I know you're crying there sitting there watching this. But Civil War is up here. And now we have our big final battle here between Endgame and Civil War. I just want everybody to be aware at this point, which I think I've said before, but I'm trying to be a little objective in some cases, but down at the end of the day, it comes down to my personal opinion. And I'm really struggling with this one. I'm thinking it over and over. And I know objectively, Civil War might be the better movie. But all the comic book payoffs here, all the moments that literally could be straight on a comic book page, the moments they've built up in the MCU, all the throwback lines and 
callbacks and everything. All the emotions raised at an all time high and finally having to let go of our original crew with one of the most epic final battles we've had ever in movies history. I will say that I will take that hot take. I think I have to give this one end game. Like I said, I know it might not be the best like objectively movie, but as a fan of the MCU, when you watch this, it was the pinnacle of everything you've been watching for 10 years. It is the only movie I've gone to see multiple times at the theater. Still watched it at home too, obviously a bunch. And it is amazing every single time. Like I said, I think it just has the pure event power to get itself over Civil War. Even if you just watch it at home by yourself, it still feels like an event that you're witnessing. Such a big, powerful movie. And it wins my bracket flight challenge. So let me know if I'm a complete idiot and you would have had everything completely different on your list or if you actually somewhat agree with me. Honestly, the decision I'm going back to the most is Winter Soldier. Now, it probably wouldn't have made a difference on the ending, but yeah, it would have been the same ending, honestly, I think. But I just feel like Winter Soldier is probably a better movie than Avengers, but everything would have been the same. It just would have been a Winter Soldier here and here instead of the Avengers movie. So that's the only thing I'm thinking that would change but everything else i'm pretty happy with what i decided on to go uh let me know like i said if you agree with my takes or not and uh comment anything from music gaming movies tv that you want me to do rankings or brackets about next and i'll be sure to make them and i'll see you guys in the next one